Hi, my name is Kay Vassy, and uh, I am the lead technical animator on Fortnite. Um, my sort of talk today is a little specific about Fortnite just because that's what we're sort of doing. Um, and I, I assume you guys have heard of Fortnite. And so uh, it will be kind of specifically about animation blueprints. A lot of the team, a lot of the technical animation team is devoted to Fortnite. And by a lot, I mean all of us in multiple locations around the world are all trying to accomplish um, uh, getting this game out with the cadence that we need. Um, I just want to sort of set a precursor here. So tech animation, typically they, you know, it's rigging, right? I don't know if that's usually the word that you guys throw around for that job, but it's like, oh, they're the riggers. They rig the characters. They do the rigging. We're at a point now in this sort of, you know, post Fortnite world or post Fortnite release world where we're not so much rigging characters anymore, but we're living in engine and we're doing a lot of rigging in the engine with Anim Blueprints and then new tech that's sort of on the horizon that you might have seen come through the roadmap earlier. Um, so what I'm going to do, um, well, first of all, I will say, so when I started at Epic, I'm four, almost four and a half years, going on five. I, I basically took over Fortnite from the artist that was currently there handling everything by himself. So I've been on Fortnite um, as long as I've been with the company. And... Um, started on Save the World, which I assume you guys know is this other game mode besides Battle Royale, and sort of moved through the Battle Royale transition, and we sort of have, have moved our tech into um, the area to be able to handle skins, to be able to handle back bling, to be able to handle all this cool stuff that you guys are seeing on streams, and now we just saw pictures of, of you know, action figures and toys and things like this, which is just psh, kind of mind-blowing. So... Uh, let me go ahead and get started. Make sure the remote works. Hey, hey, it does. Okay, so I mentioned the fact that we spend most of our time quote unquote rigging in engine. And my talk is gonna be sort of in two halves. One is what I'm gonna call the glue, which is sort of how we build the characters. So we get a lot of questions um, about, you know, okay, so how do you do the skins? Traditionally, um, UE4 has not been used, you know, to, to the degree that Fortnite has to build a character, to make things swappable, to add parts on the fly, to pick a skin and sort of build these characters out of parts. And so what I wanna do is sort of talk about the aspects uh, that aspect first and how we use anim blueprints to do that. Um, I've found that this is uh, pretty interesting to a lot of studios who are sort of thinking about embarking along the same sort of path and going like, okay, so, you know, how do we handle this sort of MMO style? Like, what if I change my armor? What if I change my cape? How does this work? So the two things that I want to talk about are how we sort of set this up. Uh, and again, this is all within the anim blueprint, right? So Let's just, let's just do Game Dev 101 real quick, just in case. In UE4, we have a character skin. It's a model. There are bones in there. In the case of Fortnite, those bones are set because we have done all of this work up to this point to have a shareable uh, animation system that works on different body types, heights, and things like that through the retarget manager, okay? So... What we do is we get this mesh, the bones are there, we bring it in, and we use the animation blueprint for that scale mesh that's attached to that skeleton. I know a little bit earlier there were some questions about attaching skeletons to anim blueprints and things, and I was kind of laughing in the back. Um, because that is, our, that, is, that is the thing that we hinge all of our work on, is these skins with a skeleton and an anim blueprint. So, and I'll get to some diagrams here in a second. So what is the skin made of? Uh, character parts. Those character parts, and so by character part, I mean a head, a hat, a back bling, um, a cape, a pet, uh, anything from, if anybody has played Save the World, you know that there's a character called the Outlander, a uh, female character, male character, and they have this gauntlet on their arm that sort of deploys when you punch to collect resources. That's also a character part. Uh, it could be anything like that that needs to articulate. It could also be grenades. 
the trick was in the development of this, uh, the reason we needed this functionality in the ANIM blueprint to be able to attach all this is so that in the example of the Outlander gauntlet, we are able to have that scale mesh with its skeleton, with its ANIM blueprints, play animation when we deem necessary. So traditionally, traditionally there was this sort of master, uh, master slave skeletal setup where you could take another scale mesh and say, okay, your master is this joint, this bone, that sort of thing. What we needed was a way to also attach animation to it. Um, so moving on to character IDs. The character IDs is sort of the data set, the data asset that tells the system what character parts to use. And we'll take a look at that just in a little more detail soon. But let's go ahead and take a look. Um, I'm going to step behind here since I can't quite see the screen. So like I said, this is broken. This sort of talk is broken up into two sections. One is going to be about the character parts and how we glue the characters together. The second part is going to be the fun stuff, how we do dynamics, how we set up all of the, the sort of um, dangly bits on all of our characters and some common nodes that we use on a daily basis to accomplish that. But I want to highlight mainly, whoa, oh, there we go, the flashlight works. This guy right here is called the copy pose from mesh. Uh, this is on almost every one of our character parts in an anim blueprint. Uh, what that does is that allows us to, this replaces the master-slave relationship. This allows us to have the animation running on that particular character part. Think of the Outlander gauntlet that I just described. Um, a couple of settings on this node that are super important that I want you guys to get are over here. So we have two options. You have use attached parent and copy curves. So you want to make sure that when you're trying this back at your office, use attached parent is on because that tells it to actually attach to the parent in the master slave way. Uh, copy curves is an interesting, I, I'm going to sort of digress just slightly, but I swear I will be right back. So copy curves is an option that's in there for our facial sharing system. And uh, our facial sharing system could be an hour plus talk on its own. Basically how we rig the face, how we animate it, how we bring it into engine, how we create something called the pose asset and hook it all up to a parent blueprint class and heads are special. So our facial animation and our heads are very, very sort of special cases. Um, but if you use this on a head mesh and you bring it in, you're gonna need to copy those curves. What we're doing is our facial system in Maya is linked to a blend board, which is pretty standard terminology, but basically it's the connection between sliders and what the joints are doing on the face, right? Like smile. And so uh, again, just a little bit of a digression, but the trick to this, just so you guys know, is how we share that information uh, is we have the animator uh, go through and set the, the deltas on each of these things, right? So on my head, when we say smile and I smile, you get a certain emotional feeling from this. On any of you that smile, those numbers that made me smile may not work for you. You may just kind of look sort of melancholy and a little happy, but not like smiling, right? So we have animators go through and tweak every single head and set those deltas that get stored in engine. The way that the animation comes in from Maya or your animation package of choice is that copy curves because that's coming in on the root joint of the character. So I just wanted to mention that option. Again, I wish I could go like super in depth and I know we have a little bit more time than the last couple of times I've given this talk, but um, we can cover that in a Q&A if you guys are interested. Okay. So character parts, back on track, the glue, here we go. So these are the skeletal meshes that make up our constructor class character in Fortnite. These are all things that could be character parts. The body, the head, the, the beard, uh, the hair. He's got this arm, this like mechanical arm uh, item for gameplay, uh, backpack. Uh, this is a little older diagram, but it's still very relevant. Uh, currently, we also have sort of started um, keeping our beards and hair and hat together, all depending on the dynamics needs. So every season that we come out with, and a lot of times every dot release inside of every season, we, we make it a priority to take the next step up, to push it a little further, 
find something better, make it cooler. We keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. And so far we have not hit a ceiling on, on coolness, in my opinion. We've, we've worked really hard to make that happen. Um, so every skin that you see, uh, these, are the, these are the building blocks, the basic, the very basic building blocks. One thing I want to mention here though, and you'll see the animation blueprint is listed at the bottom because that is essential. So one of the things I do want to talk about though is, uh, let's think about this just real quick before we continue the talk uh, through its completion. So we have characters, they need animation, all right? Uh, in the case of Save the World, we have different body types. In the case of Battle Royale, we just have the two, right? So let's just consider the two. Let's consider our male uh, Battle Royale character, right? We have a skeleton in engine that holds all of our animation. All of our gameplay animation works on that skeleton. It is then retargeted to our body type skeleton. Uh, this is what we call the invis skeleton. What this is is bones out of Maya with a tiny little triangle at the pelvis to make the scale mesh import. So when you actually look at your icon in the UI of the engine, it's going to look invisible. There's nothing there. That's our invis skeleton. That is the skeleton that literally runs around in level, in game. When you play a battle royale character, it is the medium male invis skeleton that you're running along with. The body, the head, all those parts that you see get attached. So for all of my fans of performance and memory, let's start doing a little bit of thought. We've got a basic bipedal skeleton running around in Fortnite. We've now got a body that has fingers, maybe toes, uh, but we don't have any face right now, just the body. And we're going to use this animation blueprint for that body skin with the options that I just showed you to take that body and glue it onto the invis skeleton. Then we move to the head. Um, our head is, is 20 plus facial joints. Uh, we need the skeleton down to the root. That's got to come in on top. Now let's add the beard and hair, but let's assume that the hair is long down the back and the beard is long down the front and needs to actually be dynamic and move. So there's more skeleton there. Then we add the arm. Then we add the back bling. And that back bling may contain a dog or a cat or a lizard or a dragon or a whatever animal happens to be in there as a pet, right? So this gets pretty killer on your performance and memory. And you basically end up having to choose between, do I need all these parts? Do I have to break this character up? You'll, we go through a lot of logic around this mechanism when it comes to our progressive characters. So if you remember from our previous seasons, we always at least have a few characters that you sort of unlock as you play, right? You play through, you, you accomplish challenges, you get the next piece of their outfit, or you upgrade their look. Um, it's great for status, it's great for, for the art. Uh, so we, we are very, this is sort of a costly thing. And uh, I always joke with Zach because, you know, earlier today, Zach gives the, the talk about the things not to do. And uh, in a large part, we are actually doing exactly what he says not to do. We're just lumping scale meshes on top of each other and then going, can we get 100 of these in the level at one time? I don't see why not. And so the engine is, I mean, it's amazing that we can do this. It really is. It's a, it's a, it's a, a wonderful piece of technology. Okay, so these are the actual, this is sort of the, the list of scale meshes, if you will, right? So let's talk about how this looks in practice with data. Uh, hopefully you guys can see this somewhat clearly, although that text may be pretty small. And I'm going to hide behind here so I can read it because I'm old. Um, so if you notice, going around this sort of circle, you're going to see that you have the head, the skeleton, the anim blueprint, and the data item. That data item is where we store um, uh, what scale mesh is it, what anim blueprint is going to be used for it, and material overrides, does it need a socket, what's the socket name, anything like that, what's the skin tone, any of that goes into the data item. That's where, that's where the sort of character part data gets stored. You can see we have one for the head, and as we were talking about earlier, it has its own skeleton in Anim BP. The body is the same, backpack, the hair, the hat. Uh, oh, gadgets, I, I didn't even talk about gadgets. So. Uh, if you play Save the World, you're no, you'll notice all of our soldiers have grenades back here, kind of where my mic pack is. And that's a, that's a physics setup on its own. 
and it has a rig just like anything else. All that is still packed on there. Um, hat, gadget, facial hair, charms. So charms is sort of our catch-all phrase. Uh, it's not literally called a charm, but that's sort of our catch-all phrase for we just need to attach stuff to a character, right? Um, and we have, uh, there is one piece of tech in this presentation that I don't talk about that I do want to mention that, could, that, that should be coming soon for you guys called the constraint node. And so when we get to the fun stuff toward the end of my talk, please remind me to talk about the constraint node. I'm putting that on you guys to do that. Um, so you can see how everything sort of uh, fits in to define what a character is. So a Fortnite character, th this is a lot of bookkeeping, guys. This is a lot of uh, follow through and a lot of homework to make sure you have all of this data rounded up and ready at any time. Uh, and then make sure that it's performant in a game. One more slide here. So ultimately, we have what we call the, the CID. That is the character item definition. The HID is the hero item definition. The hero specialization. Now, a lot of these are set up because of Save the World. Because if you have played Save... And how many have played Save the World? Come on, there's like six of you. Aw. BR, Battle Royale. It's the same six people. Seriously. We play your game. Um, <laughs> so, so a lot of these things were designed for Save the World because we have a hero card system in Save the World that says, like, oh, you got the basic Outlander, and then you got the, the whatever ability Outlander, and then the whatever ability Constructor. Those things are all stored in the, the hero IDs. Think of it like a trading card, right, with different stats on the back. Um, you'll see where the character part fits into that, and you'll see where all those character parts are, and then you'll see again the, the very, very basic skeletal mesh and anim blueprint. You could basically take the entire slide here, and it would go into that area right there, before it, th this sort of side, before it fills into what the game actually calls. So as a tech animator, when, and the cadence with which we are moving, which is almost bi-weekly at this point, when you get bugs, when things go bad, you're, you're now your rigging team, what would be called the rigging team, is not just about how do I make sure this knee looks really good when it bends, but is now also where in the process did this thing break? What calls this? Why is this not working on the Switch versus Android versus PS4 versus Xbox One? So the, the idea of technical animation on this game within this presentation and, and just specifically how Anim Blueprints are talking to everything else has elevated and, and has kind of risen above um, what we're used to. So uh, this sort of, of section that I want to jump into, uh, in other words, titled The Work. And these are all of our secondary animation assets. So. One of the aspects that, that some people don't quite think about, and it was even kind of difficult for our animation group to get when we started adding secondary animation as a, an expectation. Secondary animation meaning uh, physics, cloth, animation dynamics, um, uh, trail control, spring control, anything that you would do in the animation blueprint to affect the position and or rotation of a bone in space and its accompanying geometry, secondary animation. Not necessarily secondary animation in the sense of, of you know, animation, character animation, but other things moving on the character to give it life, to give it that cool factor. Keep in mind, we were just talking about how these characters get built. So the animator is going to animate this character. And largely that, that motion set already exists. They will have absolutely zero control over her hair or any of the accessories on her belt, of her wings, of anything associated with her uh, that dangles, moves, or anything else. There's no joints for it whatsoever. And potentially, they could even not see the skin while they're animating whatever gameplay animation they're going to be doing. And so that's what I mean by the work, the secondary animation, because it's up to tech animation to now put this in and make sure that it remains solid, cool, and awesome. Um, so some of the things that we handle, uh, back blings. 
So we kind of, I, I kind of went through this. So capes, backpacks, wings, um, now pets, things like that. Uh, I have to be careful not to say other cool stuff. Um, there's also hair and beards, which we talked about. I mentioned having long hair, like dreadlocks in the back or like a long beard in the front. There's clothing, there's general danglies, anything that hangs off, earrings, um, uh, tassels, anything like that. And then as well as pickaxes. So most of our pickaxes have uh, some sort of dynamic uh, attribute on them or, or you know, something to sort of just notch up that cool factor. Um, this stuff is important. This stuff, I say cool factor, I say, you know, that sort of thing. It's more than that because this also affects our store and what we do with these assets. And so when there are plans that like you have this pickaxe, if there's a way to make it more valuable or to make it cooler to have this thing spin and put effects on it and do all of that, that really matters. And so kind of to your point, when, when Tech Anim fails to be able to represent that level of, of uh, craftsmanship on a device, there are kids out there that may only be playing our game on Android, right? And so we work really hard to make sure that they have the best chance of having that same experience as, as one of the Twitch streamers who's, who's like, you know, dual NVIDIA card, huge machine. Like, we, we want that experience to feel good to them as well as the, the highest of the high end. Um, so I'm going to move through here with this character skin. Uh, and there's going to be some gifts to sort of show what we're talking about. But just to sort of follow up on what I was just about to move to is what I like to call with my team um, the LOD1 solution. And that ties directly into what we were talking about earlier uh, with this gentleman in the front, is that when we start a skin, when I kick off a technical animator on a skin, the first thing that we do is strive to solve for LOD3, LOD2, LOD1, however many LODs you've got past LOD0, we solve for that first. If they have a jacket, if they have a skirt, if they have a hat, if they have a beard, we try to get it moving in the best way possible on the lowest common denominator platform. Uh, Zach mentioned this morning, always test on the lowest common denominator platform, even if you don't plan on releasing on it, because you don't know what you're going to be releasing on next year. This is the same thing. Fortnite, I believe, is on every possible platform that you can find. Um, we have to hit all of them, and that experience has to be good. So when I work with the artists and I'm giving them creative feedback, I'm pushing them to make sure that this character that up close looks really nasty because it's like an LOD3 still feels good when we play it and you can see something moving or something going. Um, this is directly related to cross-platform technical animation. We get to do it once. We do not do, uh, we do not do technical animation per platform. That is not something that we strive to do. Our schedule is way too tight for that and we just cannot do it. So. We try and get it done the first time, the right way, every time. Doesn't always work out, but we try really hard. Uh, we mentioned earlier performance versus memory. So that's a consideration because everything you do in the Anim Blueprint costs. And you're going to pay a cost one way or the other. All right? So for a progressive character, uh, which we will, we will sort of talk about here in a little bit, uh, if you guys remember from season six, like, okay, so the six of you that play back me up. So on season six, we had a character called Calamity. She was a cowgirl. She has like the, the hat and the big duster jacket and, and everything. And so as you level her up, her outfit gets cooler and then she starts glowing and then these effects come on. The previous season, we had a character called Drift who was the same way. He got like a fox mask and had this jacket and it was, it's, it's awesome stuff. So when we get these models, we have to figure out how do we chop these up? Is the base guy a separate scale mesh skeleton anim BP from this, or do we put it all together? How do we deal with it? So that discussion is uh, memory. How much do we chop this, or how, how much do we chop this up, right? 
if we keep it all together, then obviously it's going to cost more. But then you're like, well, if we chop it up, we then need a whole bunch of anim blueprints because I need this dangling at this stage, and then I need this and this dangling at this stage. But then at the next stage, I don't need these dangling, but I need all of this dangling. And then I need all of this moving at this next stage. And then at the very last stage, I need the effects geometry moving. And so then you start ending up with, you know, three, four, and five anim blueprints for one character. And, you know, typically, in, in that's all going to get loaded when you load the character because it has to have everything available for when you level up, for when you hit that mark. That's expensive. So there are definitely discussions to be had around that. Specifically to Anim Blueprints, though, just to like swerve back into this lane. Um, Zach this morning talked about Tick, and um, he and I had already joked about it from our previous dev days, but I, I, I mean, we use Tick constantly. He was like, don't ever do it, no matter what. And I have to tell you, no, do it, because... I mean, there's a difference. There's a difference in blueprint tick, right? Like you know, a design sort of blueprint versus anim blueprint. I mean, you're always taking anim blueprint, but we use tick all the time on so many of these parts, and it's not, it's not completely devastating. But please be smart about it. Um, we've we've done a lot of things to sort of try and uh, adjust our workflow to make it a little better, but uh, we will be using tick for handling all this stuff. Uh, and we already talked about sort of how many character parts are we, are we dealing with if we if we start chopping up a progressive character. Uh, stay true to the fantasy. So this is sort of what I was talking about, where when we put a pickaxe in the store, right? Like there's a pickaxe that came out with this sort of World War II character skin, and it's like a, 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 a you know Mustang P51 Mustang engine on the top of the pickaxe. And I did the system that just rotates it constantly, right? Like the propeller rotates and it's physics. It's based on how you lean it. Like it's just a little offset. So it kind of catches itself. And then effects is like the thing's vibrating and it's just spewing sparks and smoke and it's super cool and you want to play with this. But if those kids that are on Android can't see that, then we are, uh, you know, we're, we're losing something in the fantasy of having that real object and having it do what we've designed it to do. And so we try our best to stay true to the fantasy of these characters. You know, if you want to run around as this character in this outfit, we want you to feel fulfilled by doing that, right? If you, if you want to be the creepy, like the pink bear, the, the cuddle team leader, pink bear head character, then we want to make that as fun as possible for you if that's your thing, right? So finally, try mobile first, as I said before. Um, I always joke, uh, I always, I, I mean, I'm, it's sort of joking, half joking, sort of joking. When I say, when I talk to people about working on Fortnite, and I'm like, well, it's a mobile game that also looks really awesome on PCs. But that's literally how I like to think about it, is that we, we make mobile first, and then we go, at least in tech anim, at least where I have a say. <laughs> okay, so... Let's talk about the actual specific sort of parts that we get into and then some of the nitty gritty nodes and how we set those up. So uh, back bling wings. So here's the thing with wings. I think I just spiked the audio. Here's the thing with wings. Wings are fairly new to Fortnite. They're a type of back bling. They're really cool. We're sort of doubling down on them. They're just neat. Everybody seems to like them and it fulfills a fantasy to have like the the, the skull wings like on this character. Um, here's, the, here's the problem though. Fortnite as a game ultimately is a shooter. And so our right shoulder is golden real estate. So that if we go ADS, right, with a, with a weapon, we have to be able to, to control what's covering up the reticle, what's close to the reticle, what's covering the weapon. We want to make sure that it's a good experience. So one of the things that Tech Anim does is we create uh, state machines for these based on being able to trap states of the character. For example, are they aiming? Which direction are they aiming? Are they aiming? What is their pitch and yaw? How are they currently situated in the level? Are they crouching? Are they standing? Are they skydiving? Are they uh, floating in a glider? Um, we do all sorts of things. So, Anim Blueprints, our, our you know, sort of custom 
and in blueprints have the ability to, to ask in an easy way of all of these states of the character. It's not something that you guys could not achieve at your studios, uh, but we've used it so much and we had to nativize a lot of it that we just now have the ability to say like, hey, are you aiming a gun? Okay, so if you are, then we can apply logic to that. Uh, you'll see here the state machine that when she goes ADS, the wings close to get them out of the way of the camera. And I want to talk about really quickly. So an example here at my flashlight is pawn speed 2D. So this is something that we, we constantly have, and you can map it into uh, float values, into a range. And then we're sending that into a pose asset. So, and, and applying, whoa, and applying an additive. So what that's doing is, we use this all the time. So uh, how many of you, let's do this way. How many of you have played with physics and anodynamics in UE4? Eight, ten people. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we do a lot of trapping of the velocity of the character to allow things to settle quicker, based on some sort of float value or multiplier, so that when a character is running and then they go ADS immediately, we don't have like their elf ears and everything just still like settling over here because we want to clear that immediately for for the action, right? We want to make sure the player gets that. So as an example, we do this all the time. Uh, by trapping different velocities, trapping different um, sort of states. All right, so let's talk, you get a little preview here, but let's go ahead and talk about her hair. So we, uh, we have quite a few tools at our disposal. Anim Dynamics is one. Um, the rigid body node, I should have been more specific just a minute ago when I said physics. I should have said rigid body node inside of Anim Blueprints. Is that the same group of hands with rigid body versus physics? This, this guy. You want to come help me? Yeah. Um, so the rigid body node is uh, something we use a lot of times for collision, especially when it comes to hair, especially big bundles of hair like this, because it tends to collide a little bit better than Anim Dynamics. This is all stuff that we are constantly iterating on and pushing tech-wise. But uh, you'll see here that She's actually wired in with Anim Dynamics. We want to make sure that our, our sort of art quality bar in this case, um, you know, we, we, everybody that makes a game has to make concessions for, for clipping, for penetration, for things like that. We try our best to keep those things at least in areas that are not front and center to the player at all times. We try and get things to, to behave. Um, You'll notice here that uh, all of the, although the comments are wrong on these anim dynamics nodes, uh, you'll see again that we are, are checking pawn speed 2D and then uh, clamping alphas on all of these that are controlling her hair um, as she runs around. And so it's something that just adds a little bit. Now, having seen this GIF a couple of times, as the tech anim lead, I would really, really go to the artist and be like, listen, when she goes ADS, we're injecting velocity into the character to get the gun up as quickly as possible, and it's kind of popping the hair a little bit. Get it out of there. And so, uh, obviously, I failed at my job that day. But um, this is yet another example of how we sort of uh, apply anim dynamics on these skins. So next, come on button, there we go. Okay, clothing. So this is Calamity. This is the progressive character I was talking about earlier. So Calamity is uh, sort of our, she's sort of our frontline example of tech that is currently released to the public. Um, her cloth, quote unquote, is actually not cloth at all, but rigid body node setup. So you can see on the screen um, the rigid body nodes that control her. So the rigid body node, in case anybody doesn't know, it is a node that you tell what physics asset to, to use. And it, uh, it applies the, the physics asset and runs it in the context of the anim blueprint, largely on tick or animation update, however you're, you're running that. Um, it does have an alpha. You can sort of alpha it on and off. 
Uh, I personally have gotten it into situations where it gets a little dicey with alpha if you have a lot going on, but it's totally possible to do it. So this is basically how we've been handling all of our long claw uh, leading up to her. We sort of prototyped it on some other characters, then leading up to her, this system went into effect. You can see the fat asset next to uh, next to the GIF and next to the, the nodes uh, here. So you can see basically how much this takes. So at the time, Calamity, uh, she is progressive, which means she's chopped up into a lot of different scale meshes that you have to level up. She also had the highest bone count of any of our skins, which, um, you know, we were so concerned with the art of it all, right? And the art team is very like, you, it's got to be awesome. It's got to be awesome. It's got to be awesome. Do whatever you have to do. It's got to be awesome. She came out and like red flags just flew immediately. It's like, oh my God, performance is terrible. Nobody can play her. Like we've got to figure out what's going on. But um, yeah, we sort of, we sort of uh, uh, went over the moon with her just to, just to, to make sure that that duster again, fulfilled the fantasy of having a duster coat like that on your character, right? We really wanted it to feel good. We wanted it to make sure that it wasn't colliding and penetrating everywhere. Um, and we wanted it to feel heavy. And so uh, for those of you who've ever used cloth in UE4, you know that it's, it's a great system, but it's really hard to sort of dial in that, that fabric type, right? If you know in your head that you want like leather, and it needs to be heavy leather, it's really hard to sort of get those numbers to align in real time to feel like heavy leather with just cloth. We get our results much quicker here and have a lot easier time adjusting the math behind the scenes to be able to get this to feel certain ways. If we want it to feel silky, we can do that. If we want it to feel heavy and leather, we can do that. So let's talk about general uh, danglies here. So, so far we sort of hit anim dynamics, which is, anim dynamics is amazing. And we hit rigid body node, which is also amazing if you know what you're doing. Um, what we haven't talked about though is what happens when those things go away. So largely, on older mobile devices, um, and by older, I mean, you know, like a year plus old, uh, you're not going to get dynamics to the degree that will help fulfill that fantasy and sell that character, okay? Uh, you're just not. There's not enough memory. There's not enough juice in the phone. It's just not going to happen, right? Switch is, switch is similar, which is very similar. So... What that means is that then we have to switch to procedural animation nodes as opposed to dynamics, right? So when you have like that duster coat, uh, the rigid body setup is, is, is low hanging fruit. That's easy. That's easy to go to. It's easy to, to say like, oh yeah, I know this is gonna work. The harder part is again, LOD two and three. What do we do? How do we get things moving in a similar fashion at these levels? that we don't have all of our, our uh, big tools, right? So here are some examples based on this. So this GIF is a little hard to see. Hopefully, um, what we'll do is we'll just kind of take it piece by piece. So you can see, obviously, the knife moving here on her side. And it was amped up for, for this example, just so it was very clear to the room that that was moving. Um, that's just basic anim dynamics. Just a very basic back and forth, springy sort of motion. Let's talk about the belts in front right here. These are a little bit hard to see, and I imagine that you guys are going to have a hard time seeing it. There's two brown belts that hang down with two silver buckles on them. Those belts are the trail controller. So who's played with the trail controller? Anybody? Awesome. Okay, so what the trail controller does is basically lag. So if you have a joint chain similar to my arm and it's going to move, the trail controller makes it do this. So you get a lag automatically when, it, when that elbow moves or whatever joint moves. If you combine this with the spring controller, which is also more of a procedural animation node, what you'll get is this. So 
by doing that, we've basically gotten a similar motion to how we would, would set up dynamics without the cost of dynamics. That's where, that's where the experience of sort of being a technical animator on Fortnite at Epic comes in. Because you have to know how to achieve this stuff in the simplest way possible. Also, uh, I want to talk about, and I asked you guys to remind me, but you don't have to. Right here, the constraint node. This is relatively new tech, uh, and it is, it's my favorite. So if you look over here, those two buckles. Okay, so let's, let's go back just a little bit, and let's talk about the characters again. Okay, remember in Viz Skeleton, animation is working on a basic bipedal rig. They don't have all the bells and whistles that we have on these skins. The animation set has been done for years because Fortnite. And uh, there's not a lot of animation that happens um, on specific things. Let's, let's take just a, se a second and talk about Paragon, if you guys remember Paragon. Paragon, each one of those characters was a masterpiece. Each thing on there could move, it could animate, it could have a control, it could live with the motion. There was none of that. We're retargeting. The dynamic stuff on our skins does not exist to animation, and a lot of people get confused by that. So what happens when you have this dangly piece that needs to hang, but it's between multiple spine joints with soft weighting? For any of my, are, how, how many people in the audience are actually rigging? Riggers? Technical animators? All right, cool. So, it seems this section, you guys all came together. Um, so, if you have this object between two joints with soft weighting, what's going to happen? You have to pick a parent for it. If you go with the upper spine joint, when I twist, it's going to go here, and it's going to follow its parent pretty much at all times. Well, that looks terrible. You go down below, okay, well, that's fine. So then when that turns, it's going this way. It's hard to do. But that's going this way, and it's going to look terrible as well. So what you really need, and different studios have different terms for this. Um, my background is, is movies, 3D animation in movies. And so we had Barnacle, we had Ride Along, we had all sorts of things. What it is is basically a way to say, I want a constraint right here. I want to take this object, put it on that constraint, and weight it evenly between everything, right? Maya's like, yeah, sure. Max is like, not a problem. Blender is like, perfect, that's easy. UE4 is like, what? Do you, what? So we have now the constraint node, and this thing is so awesome. So those weights right there are the, little, the literal joint weights from Maya um, for that constraint area. So those buckles on her belt are using the constraint node to stay in place and then have dynamics on top of them, which is so cool. I mean, I'm kind of like nerding out about it, right? And you guys may or may not think it's cool, but my, my tech anim people, it's really cool to have that in engine now. Like that is amazing. Now we've also made it a little easier internally, and I, I, I know we're not gonna release, but I'm still gonna make you sick. We have the ability to, to weight things in Maya and then just grab it and copy the output from the script editor directly into UE4 and make that node for us, which is even better because otherwise you could be typing a lot of, lot of decimals. Um, so guys, yeah, please, when you, when you get back and you get you know, future releases of the engine, check this node out. This is great. No dynamics. You, you can use it sort of, uh, we haven't really hit a problem with it costing a lot yet as far as per per memory, so go to town. Um, everything else here is very, very much standard. Anim Dynamics, trail control, you can see that her, um, you know, the leather straps on the gauntlets, if it's, if it's movable, we put a joint there and move it. That's, that's the bottom line, period. These skins are designed, I'm usually in early at the process, early enough in the process to say like we want this to move this to move this to move and then they'll come and say can this move and then the answer i always give is yeah we'll look into it yeah we'll figure out how to do it even though behind the scenes i'm like oh lord this is going to be bad <laughs> um all right let's talk about pickaxes so uh rigid body node plain and simple Here's two things, or, or well, a few options that I want to talk about. Okay, so this is uh, a really cool pickaxe that I did. This was the first pickaxe to have dynamics. 
in the game. Um, I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, and uh, just as, as a little anecdote to show you how cool Epic is, originally this shark looked a lot more lifelike. And uh, someone who works there was like, you know, it just kind of feels weird to have this animal speared on the, you know, and then we're going to beat it on walls in the game. And everybody, when they looked at it and heard the feedback, were like, yeah, you know what? That's cool. We, we should respect that. And then we went and changed the material so it's a toy shark. It's plastic. So when you look, it's, it's just a rubber shark on a spear. It's not a real shark anymore. All the spec was removed. Everything was done. But that's, that's how we do things. That's why, that's why we love it. Um, all right, so let's talk about this rigid body node that's in use here. And the areas that I want to hit are there's three options right here uh, in the middle of my flashlight. Component linear acceleration scale, component linear velocity scale, and component applied linear acceleration clamping. Okay, so linear acceleration scale. Here's the problem. Basically, there are two spaces in which you want to do a dynamic simulation. Component space or bone space where you pick the root bone or whatever bone is relative to that space. So, so in summary, component space, bone relative space. Uh, the problem is artistically, when you see a simulation happen on an object in one of those two spaces, it may not get enough velocity in the world to actually move. Okay? So, the linear scale allows you, if you run forward with the pickaxe and you're running, that basically says, I need it to jiggle more. I need your motion in this space to affect this more. Uh, the uh, angular is for if you're going to rotate. So, I'm sorry, the linear velocity scale is more for rotation. So, if you're standing with the pickaxe and you do this, it's how much follow through and settle you're going to get. You can get it into a state where when you walk and run forward, it's simulating. And when you rotate, nothing happens really. And so because this is happening separate from the actual forward velocity of the character, this gives us a way to scale that. Now, the problem is that you will eventually hit math that will take your physics object and send it off into space. And then it may string back and come back and come back and basically break your game and make people very, very upset. And I know this because I've done it a lot to people who play this game. So, so what we did was we put in a clamp. What this says is if you go past this point, if your velocity, if, if you're being told to go past this, stop. Don't. So you can play with the clamp values. I think the default comes in at like 100,000 or 10,000. We've, we've gone all the way down to 0 0.1, 5, 500, 120. However your current setup works with that object, these three things you want to tweak, okay? Um, one of the other things that I want to talk about here as far as this node goes before we, we sort of open up for questions and such is this override world gravity. And I, I'm so terrible at my presenting job that I did not highlight it, so it's grayed out in this example. And that's just a huge fail on me. Um, I should probably take the L. But uh, here's an interesting thing. Here's an anecdote for you. So Fortnite as a game has been in development for a long time. And it has come to fruition, fruition in Fortnite Battle Royale and Save the World. And obviously, a lot of people enjoy it. There's a lot of history here to this game development cycle as it went through the game jam stage, as it went through people coming on and off. And the bottom line was that people had to do things at that time to make it feel good. And we're just, it was a, it was a, 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 a sort of, everybody just loved it. And, and it was a labor of love for a lot of people. So let's start talking about dynamics and how that works. So we would have the Paragon team doing dynamics, and they'd be like, yep, this works great, feedback's great. We would try it on Fortnite and be like, why is this so broken? Why can't this, we would move the setup from this game to this game and be like, why am I getting different results? 
turns out that way back in the day, like when the first two or three people were like, I've got this idea for a zombie building thing, um, set the world gravity at like negative 24,000 in the project settings. And it was because it makes the characters feel really good when you jump. Like, it's like, yeah, that's what we wanted. And that was the quickest, that was the shortest path, right? It's like a line. The shortest path between two points, boop, that's how that went. Let's just, this is like on Jupiter now or whatever planet, right? Like, it's the gravity's insane. Well, the physics systems in UE4 are always like, well, this is, what are my, what's my gravity? Awesome. And so things were super unstable constantly, and we couldn't figure out what was going on. So we had added to all of the Dynamics nodes override world gravity so that you can go into um, your gravity settings for individual nodes for your physics simulations and you can set them to negative 980 and match earth gravity so that you can get a decent simulation and actually have stability uh, but you can also amp this up and down to get different effects it is very much a tool that you can use obviously if you start going to extremes you're going to get instability all depending on your project settings right so those of you that come into a studio and inherit a project or are going on to something else just keep that in mind um, I, I know that's a very common UE4 thing to have project settings and and it's just that when you when you're on it you get on a new project and you're like really excited and you're ready to dig in and you're making decisions all the time you, you know you don't think to really go check all the little minutia that led up to that point and so uh, we've tried to cover you we got gotcha. you so now you can just adjust your gravity on the node itself uh, and with that, I say thank you. Um. Mm -hmm.